Hey guys, welcome to C part 2. Um, keep pushing yourself. This one finishes up our review for unit 2. Um, secret word is COP because it's the constant of proportionality. Um, and here's an answer key. This one is tricky. Hopefully you remember to go find a common point that you can see. And this was, we made posters out of this before. So if any of this was tricky, you really got to know it. So please stick around, watch the video, and hopefully it'll help you review. All right. So this problem is asking for the constant of proportionality. Remember that the constant of proportionality is the factor that you multiply one number by to get the other. And it's constant because it's the same um, for any values in the table and it has the word proportionality or proportional in it and that's because it's part of a proportional relationship. So to figure out what to multiply we can go backwards and use division. We could do 10 divided by 4. So 10 divided by 4. 4 goes into 10 twice which would be 8 and then this is going to be a decimal so let's bring down zero and add a decimal point, four goes into 25 times, and that would be zero. Um, so it looks like I can just do four times 2.5 to get 10, and that should be constant. We could test another one if you really want to be sure on the state test, but it should be 2.5. And in this problem, that's uh, $2.50 two uh, for every hour that Mr. Wolf beats us. Alright, and then the equation, well, just look at the table. Look at what we just did. We take the hours and we multiply them by 2.5 and it always ends up equaling the dollars. And you could also see it written like this. 2.5 H is equal to D. Alright, so that's pretty easy when we have a table, but it's slightly trickier when we have a graph. Um, so in this graph, if you look at it, there aren't very many clear points. Like this point, um, it's really hard to tell exactly what it is. You're basically looking for, imagine a sniper, and you're looking for a point that ends up exactly in between the two grid lines, like right where the points meet. We're trying to assassinate a point, is basically what I'm saying. Um, so let's take a look over here, and it looks like the only one truly being assassinated is this one because the lines cross it perfectly. So the coordinates of that point are 2, because x always goes first, 2, and 15. Alright, the 2 is hours, so that's like 2 hours, and the 15 is amount of snow, so that's um, inches, 15 inches of snow. And you totally could, if it helps you, you could draw a little table. Hours and snow, and we have 2 and 15. We're looking for the constant of proportionality. We're looking at what to multiply 2 by to get to 15, or multiply 2 by to get to 15 down here. So again, we just need to divide. We need to do 15 divided by 2. 2 times 7 would be 14 going to have to add a decimal point and a zero. Two times five would be ten. And so it looks like the constant of proportionality is 7.5. And that's 7.5 inches per hour. And what's cool about it on a graph is you can actually check your answer by going to one. So if I go to one and I look at the point it's hard to know exactly what it is, but if I check out the y-axis, I notice that it's between 6 and 9, and 7.5 is between 6 and 9, so that's pretty good. And then to write an equation, well, the problem's giving us these variables, so let's use them. We're going to do 7.5, and we're always multiplying the hours by 7.5, and it's going to equal the amount of inches of snowfall, which they want to use S for. 
All right, so sometimes they'll ask for an equation or the constant of proportionality just in a word problem. So we kind of got to look for the ratio. Mr. Palmisano buys five chopped cheeses for $17.50. Each chopped cheese costs the same amount. So per one, they're all going to cost the same. Using just this word problem, to determine the constant of proportionality and an equation. Okay, um, so let's do that. A couple of options. You could write this in table form. You could also write it in ratio table form. We have dollars and chopped cheeses. Um, that's $17.50 for five chopped cheeses. And again, that that's, um, I don't normally write them vertically like that. This, I know some people like to, but that's the same as this. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the constant of proportionality or what to multiply 5 by to get to 17. What to multiply 5 by to get to 17. Um, so to figure that out, we could do 1750 divided by 5. And notice if we use the same unit rate strategy, we would do the exact same thing. Dividing by 5, dividing by 5. So we got to do $17.50 divided by 5. Um, 5 goes into 17 three times, because 5 times 3 is 15. That would have $2.50 left over. Um, so let's bring up the decimal point. 5 goes into 2.5 um, five times, because 5 times 5 is 25, and that's 0. And I could put another 0 up here if I want. So it looks like each chopped cheese costs $3.50, which you can also multiply just to be sure. But let's put that up here as our constant of proportionality. And then our equation would be $3.50. And then let's see if the word problem gives us any letters. It does. S is going to be the variable for chopped cheese, so S. And that's going to be equal to the cost, which they want us to use C. For. All right, so to end this, I wanted to um, remind you guys of that card sort activity you guys did on a poster where you cut these out with a partner, organize them to see which ones were part of the same relationship, and then put them onto graphs um, to really test your theory. So hopefully you're able to figure this out on your own, but here's a review of what you should have gotten. So I'm going to start off with this ratio of 1 to 3. And I noticed that this has a constant of proportionality of times 3. So I'm going to look around for an equivalent ratio to this. And the first one I notice is right here. For two reasons. One, because 2 times 3 is 6. But then also because if I think of it like this and I simplify it, I get the same ratio of 1 to 3. All right, so let's see if another one is like that. Um, I see the last one right here, times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And if I divided that by 4 and 4, I would get 1 to 3 again. So OK, that was the easier one. So now let's start off with, let's start off with 2 to 3. Um, all right, so 2 to 3, let's see if any of these other ratios simplify to 2 to 3. Um, I noticed with this one, you know how that it's 2 to 3 and the 2 is smaller than the 3? Well, the 8 is smaller than the 12, so that makes me think it might be this one. Let's just see if they're part of the same relationship. That would give us 2 to 3. All right, that's equivalent, so let's include that one. Let's find another one where the first number is smaller. All right, here's one that might be correct. And here's one way to test it. So let's actually divide it by 3 so that we get a unit rate. We get 1. 4.5 divided by 3 ends up being 1.5. And then let's check back over with 2. So 2 to 3. If I divide that by 2, that would give us 1 to 1.5 again. So it does look like this one 
and this one are part of the same proportional relationship. Um, and then, if I were to guess, I would imagine that these three should be part of the same relationship as well. Um, so hopefully you got that, but if you want to test it out, let's start off with um, the ones in purple. So we had 1 to 3, 2 to 6, and 4 to 12. So let's graph each of those. So 1 and 3. Remember that we always do x first and then y. So that's 1, 3. 2, 6 would be right there. And 4, 12 would be right here. And if you try using a ruler, remember that a proportional relationship should always go through 0. So assume that it's starting at the origin. And then it looks like they do form a straight line. So that one is a proportional relationship. If you went so far as to write an equation, it looks like you always take x, you multiply it by 3, and it's equal to y. Next, let's check out mm -hmm, let's check out the red one. So that's the one that started off with 2 to 3, and then it had 3 to 4.5, and then the last one was 8 to 12. Alright, so I know I'm going to have 0, 0 anyway, so let's just put that, and then 2, 3, let's go right there. 3 and 4.5, we'll just start at 3 for x, and then go between 4 and 5 for y, and then we have 8 and 12, which would go right here. And then if I try and use a ruler to connect these, I don't think I can actually touch the screen with a ruler, but general idea. Looks like that forms a straight line. Um, and if you tried to write an equation for this, it'd be x times 1.5 is equal to y. Alright, and then the last one is in green. We have 3 to 2, um, 9 to 6, And I believe 15 and 10? Yeah, 15 and 10. So we have 0, 0 is always going to be part of a proportional relationship. We have 3, 2, 9, 6, and 15, 10. And it looks like those, again, form a relationship. And if you tried to write an equation here, it would actually be y times 1.5 equals x, and you could also have done it this way, which I don't have time to explain right now, but hopefully makes sense. Guys, you rock. Hopefully you're feeling comfortable with all the review we did the past two days for Unit 2. Keep it up, guys. We're almost there. See you later.